what did I say we were gonna do? We're gonna take this basic guy and then we're going to transform it, right? Now, I'm gonna take this opportunity to go back to yesterday's lesson and come all the way back. And um, I realized that part of what I was trying to do was hard because I was doing some of it freehand. So this graph here, um, it is actually, even though you didn't see it in this form yesterday, um, it is in the notes accessible on Canvas. So go ahead and um, look that up if you want to see this in more detail. What's going on here? Um, we know how translations work. We slide those things around. And then when it comes to dilation, what we're thinking about is um, taking the graph and then sort of stretching it along the x direction or the y direction or both, right? So this is the example of stretching a parabola in the x direction. Um, and I hope you can see uh, every single point on the graph. You could take any spot like say, uh, let's have a look down here. Uh, if you have a look at the x-intercept, it was one, and I stretched this parabola so it was double, it was twice as far away. So that x-intercept, which used to be one, now it's two. Um, if I look at a spot like this, uh, what's that? Looking at my scale, that's 0 0.6. So when I stretch it out double, you can see it's stretched out all the way to over here, which is 1.2 if you look at that scale, right? So this is the horizontal dilation that we looked at before. Um, this is a vertical dilation, right? Um, this time I chose a different value to stretch by. You can see on the left hand side I'm stretching by a factor of three. So therefore you should expect everything to not be double as far away, it's going to be triple as far away, three times as far, right? So if you have a look at a spot like say uh, over, let's see, over here on the left hand side, right? Um, this first set of coordinates here that I've found, um, the y value looks like one. If you have a look at the scale there, and when I stretch it out, the new y value all the way up here, that's a y value of three that you can see it corresponds to, okay? So we're gonna take this knowledge uh, and we're gonna apply it translation and dilation to our absolute value graphs down here. So let's have a go at this guy first. When you see this equation, y equals the absolute value of x plus three, I want you to think about what that plus three, which is the only difference, what is it doing and what effect is it going to have visually? So the first question is, um, that plus three, what is it attached to? Have a look closely. And you can see it's, um, it's adjusting the X, right? Like the way I visualize this is a bit like um, if you've ever watched Formula One racing and you've got um, the, the car pulls into the pit stop and then suddenly all these people jump in and then they start working on different tires. So you have to think about where is that person attached and what are they changing? Which part of the car are they adjusting? Um, which part of this equation or this function is being um, amended or transformed here? And the answer is this uh, plus three, it's clearly attached to the x, so I'm going to get a translation along the x-axis, it's horizontal, right? I'm going to take that blue graph over on the left hand side and I'm going to think about which way it's going to go, which direction is it going? Can you point actually in your classroom which way is the graph going to go? <laughs> this is really funny because you're like, uh, I'm pointing in that direction but it's reversed because it's uh, reflected across the camera, that's a bit confusing. Okay, so it's a plus three, right? So the axis is gonna move plus three, which means the graph is gonna go in the leftward direction, right? So I'm not sure if that looks correct to you. Leftward direction? Anyway, okay. So I'm gonna have, instead of an intercept at the origin over here, at x equals zero, I'm gonna have one at x equals negative three. And then everything else is the same. So this same kind of V shape, this reboundy thing, is gonna happen all over again. So I have this and I've got this, okay? Now before we leave off, right, you can see there's more information that I need to put onto this graph now that I've done the translation. Uh, the x-intercept came from our knowledge of which way the graph was moving, uh, but you can see I have a new y-intercept now, right? I don't go through the origin anymore, so hopefully you can see from the symmetry of the graph, I'm going to get a y-intercept of 3. Okay, now last piece of information. Earlier you saw I took this algebraic definition and I said, hey, you've got the left, sorry, the right part of the graph, the right branch, and then you've got the left branch and they have completely different equations. Well, what will the equations be for the branches of this line? Have a think about this carefully for a second, right? Part of it's easy, part of it's hard, right? Uh, part of this graph is just going to be, the absolute value of x plus three will just be x plus three. Which part of the graph is it? Which branch is it? It's gonna be the, can you point at it? <laughs> Will I be able to work out if you point at the screen which part of the screen you're pointing at? Um, it's gonna be the right hand part of the graph, right? Because there's a positive gradient there. So I want you to go ahead and label that right hand side as y equals x plus three. 
Now, what about the other part? Well, if we go back to our definition of the absolute value, our algebraic one, right? When you have a negative value there, when x plus 3 is negative, so when x plus 3 is less than 0, um, the graph y will be equal to minus everything inside the brackets. Everything inside the brackets, right? So that's the x and the plus 3. So if I expand my brackets there, you're going to get, let me slide up a little bit, minus x minus 3, right? And hopefully these both make sense to us. Think about the domain restriction for a section here. Uh, x plus 3 is less than 0. If I made x the subject there, I'd say x is less than negative 3. I've subtract 3 from both sides. Well, that makes sense, right? Have a look at the graph up above. You can see right here, um, it's, it's a straight line. And then when does it switch over? And the answer is right there at the intercept. When x is negative, less than negative 3, that's when I'm behaving like this. And then at negative 3, I switch over. Okay. Um, and then secondly, if you have a look at this equation here, y equals minus x minus 3, the gradient is negative 1. And of course, if I continued that graph, let's go in green here, if I continued downward, you can see I would have collided here with the y-axis at negative 3. So this is, you know, y equals mx plus b, that's the y-intercept that I would have gotten. But of course, it has rebounded up above uh, to this positive value up here, okay? All right, so we've done a horizontal translation. I'm going to ask um, you guys and teachers in the room, I'd love if you had to wander around and check how people go in this, if that's what a horizontal translation looks like, what is this going to mean, okay? Now, you can see here that I've written this equation a little bit differently, um, and it's where our algebraic definition is really going to help, and our uh, intuitive definition we have to be very cautious with. So I'm going to let you have a go. I'll give you a couple minutes to see how you fare graphing this guy on the right-hand side. Um, it teaches if you know, students in the room are getting this really rapidly or you know, don't have any trouble at all, please wave at me and give me the signal to continue. Um, but otherwise, I'd love you to have a shot at it, see what you come up with, and then um, I'll show you my solution in a couple of minutes. Okay, off you go. Come back together shortly. Let's have a go at this. Now, um, you can see what I've done is I've drawn myself some, I, I like to call them guide lines, uh, not guidelines, but lines that are going to guide this new graph that I'm going to draw. Okay, so the basic graph, y equals absolute value of x, is always kind of in my head. I've kind of gotten to the point where I've graphed this enough that I'm like, I know what that looks like and I can do the transformation straight away, but I kind of want to uh, pull back the curtains of my brain, as it were, so you can see my thinking process. Okay, now this is not a horizontal translation that like we looked at before. This is going to be a vertical translation. And you can see that more obviously, more clearly. If you take that minus 2, if you add it to both sides, so I'm going to um, add 2 to both sides, you can see the 2 is really, like again, go back to that um, Formula 1 metaphor I gave you, right? Where is that plus 2 working? What's it actually acting upon? And the answer is, it's acting on y. It's not inside the absolute value, acting on x. It's changing around your vertical values, all of your y values, okay? So that plus 2 means the axis is going to move um, upward relative to the graph, which means the graph is actually going to move downward. So that's why I hope your graph looks something like this, okay? You can see I've got this sort of relative movement here. Everything is sort of shifted downwards, okay? Now, um, clearly I need to put on some more information. I've got, count them, three intercepts that I need to put on there. And because I've given you some fairly easy values, I hope you can just basically read them off. For starters, I used to have my one and only intercept at the origin. Well, it's moved down two units, so it's at negative two. Because your gradient's one, that means you can quickly read off that that's two and negative two as well. And you're good to go at this point, though it's worth mentioning, like I said before, we should label our branches. I was actually a bit cheeky. I didn't, I, we worked it out, but I didn't label them last time. And um, we had y equals x plus 3 and y equals minus x minus 3. What will the branches look like here? I'm going to get my guidelines out of the way because now they're just um, obstructing my work. Let me just delete those, okay? What's the right-hand one going to be? It generally is the easier one because um, the absolute value of a positive number is just a positive number. Um, this guy here is just going to be absolute value of x becomes x, so it's x minus 2. What happens on the left-hand side? Well, because the absolute value didn't apply to the 2, it's going to stay a minus 2, right? It's going to be minus x minus 2. Now, you can actually, you can sort of slightly get away with just labeling the whole thing with a single equation and just saying it's the absolute value of x minus 2 as a whole thing and just leave it there. But I think you should get in the habit. It's a helpful thing and it assists your um, geometric thinking to label each of the branches independently. Okay.